Hi, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for January 29th, 2022. Wow, we are three days before the end of January. Isn't that amazing? Here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible. Amen. Because Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, the words of Jesus himself. But he said more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And we know that in the beginning, according to John 1, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. And verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. We are talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, full of grace and truth. And John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because the Word already told us that in the beginning the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus, the Word, was with his Father in heaven, and he was God. And his Father gave him, gave him for us, that we should not perish, but have everlasting life, that our sins would be forgiven, and that we would not die, but live with Jesus into eternity, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and glory to God. And the book of John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. And Luke 10, 19, and he said, I, 10, 18 through 19, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. And John fifteen twenty six. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. John 16, 8, verse 2, 11. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you will see me no more. And verse 11, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And so today... The Word of God is known as the Sword of the Spirit. Today, you shall hear Psalm 13, Proverb 29, because it is the 29th day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, which are the wisdom of God. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, chapter 39, verse 1 through chapter 40, verse 23. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 31 through 58. We shall also hear Ecclesiastes, verse 11, verse 1 through 10. Amen. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. And now, Psalm 13, which is attributed to David the King a man after God's own heart. And it reads, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. 
Verse 6 and last. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. And now, Proverb 29. And it reads, He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Whoever loves wisdom makes his father rejoice, but a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. The king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives bribes overthrows it. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. By transgression, an evil man is snared. But... The righteous sings and rejoices. Verse 7. The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked does not understand such knowledge. Scoffers set a city aflame, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. The bloodthirsty hate the blameless, but the upright seeks his well-being. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants become wicked. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. A, the king who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous will See their fall. Correct your son, and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servant from childhood will have him as a son in the end. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. Verse 27 and last, an unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Amen, amen, amen. The word is blessed, and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so is every hearer. And now from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, amen, verse 1 through 10, and it reads, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. If a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Verse 7. Truly the light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man lives many years and rejoices in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. All that is coming is vanity. Rejoice, O man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these God will bring you into judgment. Verse 10 and last. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart, and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. And 
glory to God in the highest. And this word, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, is already blessed. As in the name of Jesus Christ is every hero. And now the Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis. Chapter 39. Amen. And it reads, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Israelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in, the sight and in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was, from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is in me, is with me, or the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her, to lie with her, or to be with her. But it happened about this time, when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house were inside, that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and ran outside. And so it was, when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and fled outside, that she called the men of the house, and spoke to them, saying, See, he brought in to us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me, and fled, and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until her master came home. Verse 17. Then she spoke with him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to me came into me to mock me. So it happened, as I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me and fled outside. Verse 19. So it was, when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. Verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph, Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison, where, whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Verse 40, And it came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard. Amen. In the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them. So they were in custody for a while. Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream. 
both of them, each man's dream in one night, and each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them, and saw that they were sad. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, We each had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to him, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded, its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then the Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to me, him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Now within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were with, were his butler. But remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me, make mention of me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. I also have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief butler saw that the interpretation, when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for the pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Verse 20. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Amen and amen in Jesus' name. And now, the New Testament reading from the book of Matthew. And it reads, Beginning at chapter 13, verse 31, and it reads, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will other things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that are thinned, and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it he goes and sells all that he has, and buys 
the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full they drew to shore, and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Now it came to pass, when Jesus had finished these parables, that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary, and his brothers James, Josias, Simeon, and Judas, and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things. Verse 57. So they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. Verse 58 and last. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is all ready blessed as in the mighty name of jesus christ is i pray every hero i pray that you have believed and that in the name of jesus christ as it is written you have been delivered from every all of your sicknesses and every destruction in the mighty name of jesus christ we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. And glory to God.